Hey everybody, Peter Mancuso here from a little show called Now That's What I Call a Franchise. Maybe you've heard of it. Before getting into this week's episode, um, I just wanted to talk about some stuff going on. Um, we record our episodes you know, months in advance, but as of the release of this episode, uh, both the Writers Guild of America and the Screen Actors Guild uh, have gone on strike against basically all of mainstream Hollywood, uh, which is represented by the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. Basically, both unions are demanding their fair share of the profits that their hard work and uh, dedication produces for these, you know, multinational media conglomerates and uh, their overpaid CEOs. Now, when SAG went on strike, there were some questions around what counted as promotion, uh, something that could be considered crossing the picket line. Um, and there's been a lot of confusion and misinformation and mixed signals about this, uh, particularly for non-union members, um, even just covering older films released by these struck companies. And on our show, that's all we do, right? We've covered like three franchises owned by Disney, which I think speaks volumes about the state of the industry. Um, and now we're focusing on Batman, which of course is owned by Warner Brothers. So what do we do? Well, after sifting through all the information the best we could, we've decided to continue our release schedule as planned. Uh, we're not doing this out of laziness. Uh, if anything, delaying our schedule would actually give us more time that we desperately need uh, to watch these films and record our thoughts. But by releasing our episodes as planned, uh, we at least have the chance to insert this intro uh, and make it clear in no uncertain terms, Viviana and I and the New Arts Workshop stand with workers, above and below the line, striking or not, unionized or not. And we're not going to remove this intro from our episodes until the studios satisfy the union's demands. If you want to help the cause, post about it on social media or donate to each union's respective strike funds. Alone, we can't do anything. Together, we can change everything. All right, I'm getting off my soapbox now. Time for the show. You're listening to the New Artist Workshop. You risked your life to save that riffraff in the bar? They may be drinkers, Robin, but they're also human beings. And maybe salvaged. to your favorite podcast. Now that's what I call a franchise. I'm Peter Mancuso. And I'm Viviana Metzger. And this is a show where Peter and I pick a film franchise and go through every single installment. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And to be clear, we're defining a franchise as a series of films with at least four entries. So Viviana, what are we talking about today? So today we are talking about the 1966 film Batman. And this is your one and only spoiler warning. If you haven't watched the movie, do that before listening to this episode. It is on HBO Max, soon to be called just Max. Yeah, basically uh, everything going forward, I think, is on HBO Max, <laughs> right? Because by this point... So um, they have DC. Well, right. what's interesting is one of my trivia facts is, like, this wasn't made by Warner Brothers. Hmm. Um, because this was before... Um, they bought DC Comics okay. wholesale, so um, this was actually... Well, we'll get into it with the basic info, but it wasn't distributed by Warner Brothers. But Vivian, why don't you give us the letterbox? I just mean Warner. now they... Max owns... Yeah, I, I guess so. I guess because yeah. they own the Batman character. <laughs> what are you saying? D d tell us the letterbox blurb! Oh, That's your uh, new job! <laughs> I mean, I've bestowed upon you the letterbox <laughs> blurb! This is st I'm still getting used to my... Position. You're the blurbmeister! <laughs> I'm still learning the ins and outs of my new job. It's a new job! <laughs> the dynamic duo faces four supervillains who plan to hold the world for ransom with the help of a secret invention that instantly dehydrates people. I'm pretty dehydrated right now. I didn't think anyone could be more dehydrated, but these people get, like, super... like. They turn into dust. Into dust. When they said dust to dust, they weren't kidding. They were not kidding. <laughs> All right, so here's some basic info about the movie. So it was directed by Leslie H. Martinson, a man named Leslie. This is back when, I, when men I, had women names. I figured. 
Um, he he had directed two episodes of the television series, and that's something we're going to talk about. So this is not its own thing. This was off of the success of the TV show featuring the same cast. Yeah. Um, like with the, the exception of Catwoman, because like that the, actress um, was busy. So oh, so a different lady. So a different lady played Catwoman ah. in this movie. Um, but so this is not just out of the out of thin air. This it's, is it's like the Jimmy Neutron movie. It's like well no well no that's different because that was that came out first that was kind of like that came out first yeah that that the Jimmy Neutron movie uh first that was first came out and then they made the TV show okay, okay. I'm sure it was all being developed at the same time I don't think it was like oh shit people like this movie let's make a show but that 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 does predate okay. the t- the television this show this is like college tour this is like college tour bus what is it called college tour bus road trip college road trip <laughs> <laughs> the road trip movie with with what's what's what with Raven and Martin Lawrence. Yeah. What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> because Raven was first, and then she had the movie, and then. The... But it wasn't a Raven movie. <laughs> well, it kind of was. No, it wasn't. <laughs> um, but I I believe, and I think it might be my research or trivia that that the idea for this film was to be first. Hmm. Um, but I guess they just did the show first instead. So this comes out in between seasons one and two. I wonder how that Look happens. over the summer. Huh? I said, I wonder how that happens because wouldn't it be like a treatment like a, hey, we should make this, like, please let us do this show. Here's what we can do. I think it may have been a budgetary thing, right? Because TV is always going to be cheaper. So I think they were just like... Oh, I guess so, yeah. Um, but it was written by... This movie was written by Lorenzo Semple Jr. Not simple, but simple with an E. Hmm. Um, how, he wrote... Supple. He wrote the pilot for the TV series, uh, as well as the first four episodes, and he served on the show as an executive story editor. So he was very much involved with the show. Good job, Lorenzo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, produced by William Dozier. Um, he was the executive... Oh, excuse me. He was the executive producer of the TV series, and he was also the uncredited narrator. Um, so, like, in the beginning... Why is he um, uncredited? I don't know, because they probably just, like, needed an air rare. They're just like, hey, uh, hey, Will, do you want to come in here and read this for us? We'll, we'll, we're going to replace it later. We just need a temp track. Yeah. And then they just never replaced it. Um, it was distributed by 20th Century Fox. Uh, it was released in July of, six, of 1966, so like I said, in between seasons one and two of the show. Um, the budget was about a million dollars. Um, for the entire franchise... Not adjusted for inflation, obviously. It's the smallest recorded budget that I was able to find of any of the films in this franchise, um, and it made um, four million at the box office. So it's also the smallest box office gross mm. of the of the series. Again, that's still a pretty decent percent return, but gross. But this was a different era of Hollywood where it was like this was like a, a moderately successful movie. Gross. Yeah, I we heard you the first time. I, I was <laughs> skipping over that. Um, so, Vivian, what's your previous experience with not this film, just like the Adam West diverse, like with that name? You know what I mean? Like the show, whatever. What's what's your previous experience? Um, I know your one experience. Why don't you tell us? Okay, you don't need to be an ass about it. Um, okay, well, basically, the only way that I know Adam West um, is through. <laughs> Is through Barely Odd Parents. Um, oh, it's Catman. That's not what I was talking about. I was talking about when we watched Batman with my dad while eating chicken wings or Chinese food. Oh, I guess During we, the, we went to live with my parents for a few months during the I pandemic, remember. and my dad was like, Oh, I loved this show as a kid. It was so goofy and dumb, but I was seven and dumb, so I thought it was, I was so invested. <laughs> so we watched it one day, and it was, it was kind of, it was a lot of fun. Not the movie. No, it, it was like an episode. It was the show, yeah. But. I don't remember that. I just remember eating the food, but <laughs> but yeah. And also, uh, I yeah. know Adam West from from Fairly Odd Parents, and you know, as Catman. Catman, and yeah. I'm sure if I asked, I, I'm pretty sure I've asked my grandma or something about him. You know, she probably thinks he's a hottie patati or whatever. You know, he, I will say he was very handsome. <laughs> like I'd seen Adam West before. Yeah. <laughs> but well, he's also another thing that he was in that we would know about is he plays himself as the fictional mayor of the fictional town in Family Guy oh. in Rhode Island. He's the mayor of Quahog, Rhode Island, which is not a real oh. town. Uh, a Quahog's like a clam. 
Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, I've seen that on the... But he voices himself. He <laughs> plays himself as a recurring character version of himself as the mayor of this town. Oh. Mayor West. That's silly. Um, so random and specific. Well, you know, I wasn't allowed to watch Family Guy, so I don't know much about that, but... Mm -hmm. That's silly. We were allowed to watch CSI with, like, bodies dissolving in acid, though. That was okay. Uh... <laughs> um, no comment. But did you have any understand? Like, like I had always been aware of this sh of the show and this movie, and I think once in maybe high school or college, I tried watching this movie. Mm -hmm. But I was just like in a different place in my life at that time, and it, like, I wasn't into like the so bad it's good thing yeah. that that it's that it's admittedly trying to be. Like, it's not a so bad it's good in the sense that like they didn't try to make it bad. Like, it's intentionally dumb. I think in a lot of places it's on really, purpose. Really, really silly on, on purpose, but. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I, I loosely remember knowing about, like, Adam West, and he played Batman and stuff like that, but I didn't really... I mean, at least to my recollection, maybe I have done a whole deep dive, but I, I don't think I have ever, mm -hmm. you know, done a whole deep dive of, like, Adam West and his career and, like, you know, being Batman and stuff. But I have heard, you know, like, that is one of the... The guys, when you when you talk about Batman, you're like, oh, are you talking about like? You, he's one. He's up there when you like. Lots of people have played Batman, especially like if you look at animated Batman. Like, there's been yeah. so many different actors, but it's like the the core. It's like the people. main it's like, like four or five guys. Yeah. It's like Adam West, Michael Keaton, yeah, Christian Bale, yes, Ben Affleck, and now I guess Robert Pattinson. And, Robert Pattinson. and then if you want to count Kevin Conroy, who voices him like on the animated show. No. And for, and, and in, like, the Arkham games, a lot of people consider him, like, the definitive Batman. I guess And so. we'll get to some of those movies. He's in some of the movies. So we'll oh. we'll hear his, yeah, we'll, we'll hear his performance. I guess just, like, in, in kind of lame, not layman's, but, like, in people who wouldn't have the seen. The general consciousness. Yeah, the yeah. general consciousness who wouldn't necessarily have watched the, the Batman show or maybe did when they were, like, kids or whatever. Yeah. Basically, like... <laughs> my mom's generation um, I think they, they only kind of refer to or I have only mm -hmm. heard people refer to um, yeah. like the guys you know like the live action guys mm -hmm. but, but that's cool he's like the guy you know yeah and that's and that's the thing again for like if we ignore the last two Batman quote unquote films that we watched right mm -hmm. this is really like the first real Batman attempt right what um, the fuck was the last one <laughs> it's yeah. no I'm not talking about Batman people don't know about that one we record a secret bonus episode oh just kidding just kidding I forgot the, the, the no, back. but I'm talking about I'm talking about like the serials from the 40s yes 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 the um, serials but it's you know Adam West and Batman are very synonymous not just because he like kind of pioneered the on screen role mm -hmm. um, in a lot of ways but also in the reverse he didn't really Batman kind of pioneered him in a sense like he didn't really it, this is a unfortunate a new, piece of trivia he kind of got actor? typecast and, and he didn't really get a lot of other work like, he got work here and there, but it, he never got oh. to do, like, a big thing, really, besides Batman. Um, really? After that. Yeah, because okay. he kind of got typecast. That's so weird. What? Um, which is funny, because he has such incredible intensity. Mm -hmm. And I think, and we'll talk about this, but I think what makes this, and I imagine the show, work is it's so dumb, mm -hmm. but the writing is like aspires to like Shakespearean complexity <laughs> and he delivers it as if he's performing like Othello or Hamlet or Macbeth and like that's what makes it funny and entertaining is that there's no kind of like 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 there's definitely a sense of like they're in on the joke mm -hmm. but it's not like this sar like sarcastic it's like always played very like straight and dramatically mm -hmm. and that's what makes it really fun yeah um but um it is very, it is written very eloquently. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like the word choice is like, it, it's like they really bust out the the, the thesaurus for yeah. it. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, especially for Robin's like catchphrases, which are like, which are like iconic parts of like the show in this movie is like, yeah. like the crazy like, like jumping jeepers, Batman! Holy, holy, hallelujah, Batman! Like it's that that's like so iconic. Burt Ward's yeah. performance as Robin. Yeah. Um, and it kind of doomed the character's portrayal. Oh. Because no one really knew how to do Robin. Right? And the comics have struggled with this. Like, how do you do this where it's, like, not, like... You have Batman, like, this brooding, psychologically complex. What? And then he just has, like, a kid running around with him. Like, it's, like, <laughs> it's hard to kind of mesh those. So you either 
do it really goofy or you just don't do it, right? And that's going to be something we see when we do this series no. is that we don't... There's the, there's a way. I'm not saying there's not a way, but I'm saying it's something that it's... I don't pretend to have the exact answer. It's, you know, it's... Many know. talented people have tried <laughs> and, and failed, right? Yeah. Um, that's... <laughs> Viviana will just, like, experience, ah. like, eye attacks. A, fu a fuzz just floated into my eye. How is that? <laughs> anyway, okay. I don't know. I watched okay. it. Okay, well, while you're wiping your eye, why don't I give some background? I watched okay? it float over here, and I tried to move, but it just moved it closer. Okay, well, let me, let me, let me go into some background here. So, um, before talking about the movie, I'll talk a little bit about the origin of the TV show, because they're kind of one and the same, in a sense. So, in the early 60s, uh, Ed Graham Productions optioned the television rights to the comic book Batman, oh, excuse me, and planned a straightforward, straightforward juvenile adventure show, much like Adventures of Superman, which was a Superman show from the 50s um, that was very saccharine and kind of like, like, oh, we gotta save the cat in the tree kind of like stuff. So, um, and the lone, and also shows like The Lone Ranger um, to air on CBS on Saturday mornings, right? When negotiations be between CBS and Graham's production company stalled, DC Comics quickly reobtained rights and made the deal with ABC, oh. which then farmed the rights out to 20th Century Fox to produce the series. So oh. you don't see it as much today, especially in like the modern era of like streaming and that stuff. It's kind of shady, but like, interesting. I guess so. But you, you don't see it as much today, um, but like back in the day, like, even all the way up until like maybe the 90s, like mm -hmm. certain studios would produce it, but then they would be on a different station. Right, so like here for an example, like I forget what it is, but it's like, uh, is it? I think Warner Brothers produced Friends, or like their TV hmm. division, but it aired on NBC, right? Which mm -hmm. which would be part of like Universal. But I don't know if that merger had happened yet. Did it air on NBC? What's that? <laughs> it aired on NBC. Yeah, I think oh, so. Okay, I saw it on Nickelodeon. Yeah, but probably not like a Nick <laughs> it's on yeah. syndication at that point. Um, so, um, actually, you see a modern version of it today. I believe Viacom Paramount mm -hmm. cre um, creates South Park, but it's an HBO show, which is the Warner oh. Brothers thing, right? So that's like an issue now where it's like Paramount and Viacom have their own streaming service. So like, well, like we want it on ours, but you didn't have the distribution why rights. Why would they do that though? To to get well, back in 1999 or 19 whatever South Park aired, they didn't have their own distribution methods, so they wanted to find a, you know. My, my, my point being is that that's not that weird. No, but that, what don't, don't they, aren't they both? Aren't they one in the same? Don't, Warner Brothers and Paramount? No, no, no. Doesn't Paramount have like, like a, a producing sector right there? You know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They But then also a distribution. But not, they didn't have any TV interests, I think, back then. I think the only TV interest, I know that Viacom, which owns Paramount, mm -hmm. um, CBS is also part of that. Mm -hmm. But A, I don't know if CBS was under that umbrella back when South Park aired, mm -hmm. number one. And number two, the whole idea of South Park is like this unrated, right, but you could no, have done I, on CBS. No, so there was no other distribution platform, I guess, for them, it, like back in the mid-90s or whenever it was. Okay, I guess I was just wondering why, like, I, I, I don't know, a com you know, a company would then... Why a production company that also has... Yes. Been used as a distribution company would. What I'm saying is they didn't have any distribution it, but, platform. Okay. No, I know, but like just in general, they they don't really do that anymore. If they have their own distribution platform, they're going to distribute it themselves. But back certain sometimes they, they don't have one. I guess TV is different. Never mind. No, you're very confusion. No, I just mean like if 20th Century Fox makes a movie. Why would they give it to to X, you know, to distribute it? Why wouldn't they just do it all in house? Or well, we're talking about TV. Yeah. So I guess yeah, that's not that's, every movie studio had a TV channel. Yes, that's where I'm. That's that's where, where your confusion. Yes. Yes. Ding, okay. Ding, ding. So so we're in like this game of telephone. So DC gave the rights to ABC, who then farmed out the rights to Fox. <laughs> Uh, 20th Century Fox, I say. Fo Fox as, like, a news media thing is, like, a whole different beast, no, basically. No, no, no. Um, in turn, 20th Century Fox handed the project to William Dozier, who I mentioned before. Of course. And his production company, Greenway Productions. 
ABC and Fox were expecting a hip and fun, yet still serious, <laughs> adventure show. However, Dozier, who had never read, com read comic books, concluded after reading several Batman comics for research that the only way to make the show work was to do it as a pop art campy comedy. <laughs> so, like, the studios, like, wanted it to be goofy, but, like, not that it was trying to be goofy, but just, like, kind of something for kids. Yeah. And he was like, no, we're going to make it, like, intentionally, like, campy and dumb. <laughs> kind of like, like, like I said, this pop art. I will say, I love the look of everything. Mm -hmm. Like, it's very aesthetically fun and, and um, you know, goofy is, I think, the word. It's just <laughs> compared to, like, later versions of Batman. But it's, you know, uh, the, uh, we'll talk about later, but the outfit is so much better. It's yeah. still really bad compared to the, like, other versions. <laughs> but it's so much better. He has eyebrows. <laughs> his mask has eyebrows. Because his helmet's... It's not, it's not plastic, but it's a little bit hard. It's not just, like, cloth. It doesn't... Because the other ones just looked like yeah. he pulled, like, a, like a sock over his head, basically. I don't know what the, I, it was shiny -ish. I this one was, was plastic, no? Plastic, no, but I don't know how plastic. it was. plastic. Some kind of... Some, something shiny. But this one, yeah. this one, he didn't Sturdy. have, like, ears like he did before. These are, like, bat ears. Yeah, because the, the, yeah, the other ones just had, like, like pointy little realistic ears. realistic instead of, like... Yeah, like, um... He had, like, these plastic yeah, ears, like, along the sides of his ears. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Um, so, in terms of developing the first season of the show, Lorenzo Semple Jr., who, who wrote the movie, um, had, he had signed on as head scriptwriter. He wrote the pilot script and generally wrote in a pop art adventure style, uh, with the network having only two early evening half-hour time slots available, the show was split into two parts to air twice a week in 30-minute installments on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So, you know, like, it would end in a big cliffhanger on Wednesday night, and people, like, my dad would be like, oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then you know, they would conclude it the next day on, on uh, Thursday. How do you write in pop art? I thought pop art was a visual. I think just very, like... I think what they, they mean by that is, like, it's very, like... Contemporary feeling, okay. like this feels very sixties. You know what I mean? Like, okay. like what does pop mean but popular, right? No, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's you know it's like I don't know. It's I very guess, groovy. I guess is you like, know what I mean. I guess like when like I know the pop and pop art means popular, but like you're thinking like Andy Warhol kind of like sure, or like you know like the the dots the dot graphics or whatever you know like mm -hmm. stuff like that. So and like very colorful kind of like blocking and whatnot. Um, so, I don't know. That's interesting. I've never heard it as, as a yeah. written style. Yeah. Um, there's definitely a connection. Not, not, I'm off the pop art thing, but they, um, <laughs> there's kind of a connection there where it kind of echoes the old movie serials, right? Because again, the, the, the first of these two installments would end with a cliffhanger and it kind of would like echo the movie serials in a way, as we saw where each one would be like. Like, how is Batman going to get out of this jam? Yeah. You know? Um, so you would do that, like, once, like, every week. You would have, like, these two installments. Mm -hmm. um, on the show, the Joker, the Penguin, the Riddler, Catwoman, Mr. Freeze, and the Mad Hatter, uh, villains who originated in the comic books, all appeared in the series, the plots for which were deliberately villain-driven. Um, the show was extraordinary, extraordinarily popular and was considered the biggest TV phenomenon of the mid-1960s. Again, it was really, really, really popular. Um, it definitely started to... So they say. So they say. It definitely fell out of favor in the sense that later, like, once you get into, like, the later half of the 60s and then, like, the 70s and the 80s, it kind of, like, misrepresented Batman. Especially once you get into the 80s with Batman where you start seeing some really gritty and yeah. dark um, comic book narratives that are, like, you know essentially R-rated yeah. in a lot of ways yeah. is you, you they look they would look back and that's why the Tim Burton stuff ended up being such a breath of fresh air even though by mm -hmm. today that's goofy and we'll talk about that eventually yeah I think next week um it's become so serious every bad I always say every Batman movie is the most serious like, it's like, like oh my goodness you know like when Tim Burton's one came out with Michael Keaton it was like Batman's finally serious and then you look back on it, it's kind of goofy. And then, like, the Christopher Nolan <laughs> Christian Bale ones come out, you're like, a oh, finally, serious Batman. And then you look back at those and go, no, oh, those are kind of silly. And then the Robert Pattinson one, because that's like, now these are really serious Batman. But it's like, it, Batman always is, like, becoming more and no, more, like, dark and serious. I feel like that's silly because he's just, like, so emo. It's yeah. like, well, 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 let's save it. Let's <sighs> save it. Um,. So, let's talk about the film now, in terms of the production. So, yes. so, William Dozier wanted to make a big screen film to generate interest in his proposed Batman TV series by having the feature in theaters while the first season of the, of the series was rolling before the cameras. 
Um, but the studio, 20th Century Fox, refused because it would have to cover the entire cost of the movie while it would only have to share the cost... It would only have to share the cost of the studios. Excuse me, of the TV series. Right? So, if they made a movie, they would have to flip the bill. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the TV series, they're splitting it between ABC and all these parts. So, they were just like, do this, do this show. So... Okay. The studio acquiesced after a 1965 screening of Columbia Pictures' 1943, the Batman serial which we talked about in our first episode, in New York City, and that renewed interest in the character and after the television series became phenomenally successful. Um, the film was originally intended to be produced... Oh, I already said this. Um, <laughs> no, um, so, yeah, so it was meant to be produced before the series as a way to introduce the series to the public. Yes, kind of yes. like Jimmy Neutron, right? Um, I'm sure they were thinking about that. <laughs> However, the series premiere was moved up and the film was forced to wait until the summer hiatus after the first season. The film was produced quickly to get into theaters prior to the start of season two of the television series. Um, the, the film did not initially perform well in theaters. Originally, the film had been conceived to help, as I said, sell the TV show abroad, but the success of the series in the United States was sufficient publicity. Hmm. Um, so, let's talk about what we thought. Um... So what did you think of this movie? Great. You thought it was great? Okay. I thought it was so I knew you silly. would love this. I knew you would love this. Because it's like the right blend of like oh, the plot's interest. Like if the plot keeps your interest. <laughs> it's goofy. It's, you know. <sighs> and that's like the big thing. It's it's very much played as comedy. Like I don't think it ever it's wants so me to take it seriously. Silly. No. They're fucking... And she's fucking meowing. No, I don't think it's supposed to be taken seriously at all. No, no. <laughs> there's a fucking, there's a fucking <laughs> anti-shark bat spray. Uh, amazing. <laughs> anti-shark repellent bat spray. Oh yes, anti-shark repellent bat spray. <laughs> yeah. They use they use their Batmobile to get to their Batcopter and then go on their bat. Boat. This was the era where and everything then, was the bat and then type they, and something. Yeah. And they're on the side of the road and they get their bat bike, uh, bat motorcycle, which is just like on the side of the road. And, and like, sometimes the electronics die. They need to get new <laughs> bat Therese. <laughs> and I know that because literally the subtitle said B A T hyphen no, Therese. He, he, yeah, he paused. He paused. He was like, <laughs> I have to get my bat Therese. <laughs> A um, dolphin sacrifices its life. Yeah, it's just it's, like. It's, <laughs> People are get de- getting dehydrated into, into dust. Oh, so silly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's very much played for comedy. It's a and grand like, old time. The it literally from like the first couple of minutes, right? It, so the film starts off with like. Oh, also another note for everyone. I'm, again, I'm trying. I'm experimenting without. I'm experimenting with not writing literally the plot down in my notes. <laughs> So, again, we're, we're going to try this and see if it's a little bit more freeform, see what happens. But I will say, just right at the start, I noticed there's, like, an um, like a text blurb that's, like, you know, dedicated to all the comic book <laughs> lovers yes, and crime fight lovers. And, blah, blah. <laughs> and then, like, it shows, like, this couple kissing. <laughs> it's Because like, it's, like, the spotlight. And the spotlight moves over to the rest of the text, like, away from them. And it's like, if we left out any other lovers, we apologize. <laughs> Signed, the producers. <laughs> And it's just like you can just get a sense right away that this is like very tongue in cheek. Yeah. Um, oh my and it's gosh. Like... <laughs> there's one. There, sorry. There's one when um, they're still doing like the spotlight introduction, but like I think it was like Robin like accidentally bumps into Batman, but he's like so shocked. He's like, <gasps> like, like, like they're both backing up and they back up into each other, and they're the like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah, this opening bit, it's like all it's like people running getting like spotted by spotlights and all like different colors and stuff. It's like very stylized and I really, really like that. And I feel like Batman like it was just it was such a, not to sound like like Gen Z, but it was just like such a drag to watch the other two in black and white, right? Like No, because it's like comic books would make comic books so great is like col- there's a color, right? And all yeah. this stuff. So yeah, yeah. like the whole film is I think very well shot in terms of like the colors and stuff, but this opening felt very stylized. It felt like a comic book. Um, it's like lots of different like angles and, and yeah. it's like cutting between different kinds of colors and stuff. Um, but yeah, so we the the, the basic premise. So tell what's the main conflict of this movie, Viviana? <laughs> what what's like the main problem here? Well, okay, so the main problem I guess is that. The four of them, so Joker, Riddler, 
Penguin, and Catwoman. Oh my goodness. Who, who the latter of which is kind of framed as like the main leader, main villain. I guess so, yeah. And like leading she, them. She's really you, involved. She does. She, like she's kind of like like the smart woman, like the mom almost of these like yeah, because the rest of the world, which you don't really see a lot. The rest of them are so silly. Yeah. Um. So basically, the four tri- the the four tribe the four gang up and they're well, you know, if it was just one, it might have been like trying to take over the. Like, the city or like oh. something but because it's all four of them they're trying to take over the world <laughs> and they're trying to take over the world i don't know why because they're bad guys but there's this why they gotta take over the un i, I mean the united world organization <laughs> it was very spot on filmed in the building is literally just the un building. it is literally the un building <laughs> i lived by the un building <laughs> just Mm -hmm. that um and yeah so basically there are people at the united world the un Mm -hmm. uh meeting and there is also this scientist i guess he's coming to america to i don't know sell his thing i don't really forget to make whiskey no didn't they say that no he was he was pretending that it was a whiskey maker oh and then he zapped him What's what's the point of a dehydrator like that? Like, what's the practical use that they then use to be evil? Like, I understand why they would want to use it for evil purposes, but what was its practical purpose? I don't know. Some British dude, he made this dehydrator thing, and he was being held captive, but he didn't even know he was being held captive. He just kept drinking tea, and... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was like, oh, the fog is so yeah. heavy. Anywho, so... <laughs> Sorry. He's created this machine that basically, if you use it on a person, you suck out all the water. But then you can but, put it back. Yeah. So they turn to dust. That's not how molecules. But then, if you work. then like do like rever- if you add water to it, then like they'll turn back into people. <laughs> it's like sea monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, so they go and they like basically kidnap the the nine leaders of the world or whatever, like these representatives for these countries and they zap them all and they make them little dusts not sure why though what's the reason um, what, why do they do that oh because they want one billion dollars per person oh like for ransom yeah for from each country um and well you know that didn't work out yeah. but you know Batman Robin they're there to, they're on the case to foil you know yes um <laughs> well, that's the thing is it kind of feels it. like a few episodes strung together i will say yeah um to a point but um th- there's some couple funny things i noticed near the beginning um that i love like of all like the really like dumb things when they sl- so classic they have their secret entrance to the back cave they lift up the bald bust guy and press the button they go through like a secret oh door. yes they're finally out of the clock Yes, they no go down. More it's, hickory like, it's like dickory. a bookshelf that like moves no more over hickory dickory And they dock. slide down like those fireman poles. Yes. But luckily, there's a switch. Automatic <laughs> costume changer. And they hit that, so by the time they get down to the to the back cave, they're already wearing their outfits. Yeah. Um, and that just goes to show, like, they just don't give a fuck they, they, when they're making this. They're just like, yep, that's how we're going to have them get into costume. Whereas before, they were getting into costume in the back seat of the car and yeah, everything. No, no time to lose. Oh my gosh! It, it was just—it was just such—it was just such a joy to watch it, honestly. Because, I, like, I I couldn't even think of some of the things like that. Happened. <laughs> like, okay, so classic one, like all the the villains. Of course, they're like bumbling fools, whatever. Yeah. Um, but they're they're I think they're pretty silly. The three of them, like, because the boys are together mostly, and then you know, Catwoman's off, like, being the main lady. But, um, <laughs> but like the sharks, like the shark, I couldn't even. Yeah, so, so for the context of the shark, that. if you didn't watch the movie, um, in which go case, watch the movie. go watch the movie, pause it, go watch the movie. Um, but basically, like the first kind of action set piece is that there's like, you know, this yacht with the British guy with his invention, there's like word that he's gonna get attacked. So they're running out yes. to go, so he's in the bat copter. 
Um, <laughs> and they're flying out to the ocean. And and this is, we get to see everyone loves Batman. Like, these bikini-clad ladies on, like, a rooftop are like, Batman! That's right. The police love Batman. They, like, take off their hats and put they them over their heart. They salute him! And then there's, like, this old couple being like, oh, those are some fine gentlemen. <laughs> He's like, oh, you can really feel safe when you know that they're out working. When they're out doing their thing, <laughs> right? So, yeah, so they go down and and Batman's like okay I'm gonna go down the bat ladder from the bat copter which by the way everything in this movie is aptly labeled so oh, yeah, yeah, if you, everything has its name at on the it. bottom of the ladder excuse me the bat ladder is a little flag that says bat ladder so okay so you were like this isn't an ordinary ladder every you know what who, who was it Lorenzo very organized person <laughs> 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 um, so Batman starts descending the ladder to, I guess, jump on the yacht. But then at the last second, the yacht disappears, and Batman kind of falls in the water, and he starts to pull him up, and and a shark is biting <laughs> his leg! <laughs> and Batman's, like, fighting him off for, like, five minutes. But it's, like, clearly a fake shark, because, like, its face is, like... Like, the only way that the shark is hanging off the ladder is because Adam West is, like, pushing it onto the side so it's like its head is sandwiched between his leg yeah. and the a ladder so you can see it like bending like a taco yeah. like, <laughs> like it's, it's very much like a rubber again like no effort put into making it look real at all which again is like I think part of its charm like watching this movie makes me want to watch the show right like it makes sure, me want to sure. just like because it feels like that's a fun easy watch after a, an arduous day at work <laughs> What? You you nine to five. You come home. You're just looking for a little solace, you know, from uh, an escape from late stage capitalism. Yes, you just have some meatloaf and a glass of milk and watch your '60s TV. And watch some Saturday morning. I guess not cartoons, <laughs> but uh, Wednesday and Thursday night prime time <laughs> entertainment. Watch it with the family while we're yeah. eating peas. Um, but yeah, so Robin, there's this kind of comedy of errors. Robin's trying to get the 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 bat, the 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 shark repellent bat spray. They ha- They also had whale repellent. They had repellent for and, all kinds of aquatic animals. Like squid repellent and all this. You stuff. know, they came prepared. Um, also, I also I thought something. I thought something was wrong with me when the ship disappeared. I did not get that at first. I'm really glad they explained that. Cause yeah, I figured it was just like a hologram or something. Like I was like, how did? <laughs> like with the cereals, you're the demographic. You're the you're the target because audience. It, because it didn't look like a hologram. I just blinked and it was gone. And you were like, <gasps> I said, "Oh wait, is this an editing choice?" And I was like, "Oh wait, um, uh, I guess it's not there." <laughs> now he's got a shark on him. Well, it's a good thing Batman explained it because. I know. How does he know all these things right off the bat? Uh, literally every time. Every time the Riddler says something, he gives a riddle, I have no idea what the fuck he's talking the about. The riddle never makes any sense. But he gets it, like... Right away. Right away. And I'm like, what? And so does Robin. Robin will be like... But like, oh, of course. The obvious... Tr- the the only course. obvious answer. I think, but again, I read that that's, like, very much intentional. With it. No, I'm sure, and- I'm sure. No, but even in the even in the other movies, in the, like, modern movies or whatever, like... I'm like, huh? Yeah. Well, to be all right, all right. Those movies, though, it's a little bit better. No, it's better. It's just like he just does it so quickly. It's like, can we just take a minute or two to think about this? You know, it's like, the way I kind of think about it is there's hmm. a big thing about Batman in the comics is he's meant to be the world's greatest detective, right? Okay, Which would imply sure. that like other people are smart, but he's like the smartest. This movie, I guess, everyone's an idiot, and he's like absurdly smart. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's like, it's just so ridiculous. It's like, oh, of course, the, the molecules were too reactive because he, he did the uh, the heavy flowing water and he didn't do it. He didn't do a slow, gradual adding of water to the dust. Yeah. So, so their, their molecules were just simply too reactive. So at, at one like, point, the penguin. The would you yeah. Do that? So at one point, the penguin <laughs> wants to get into the bat cave. So he pretends. To be the missing British man, <laughs> but he's clearly just penguin. <laughs> they know, and they know. They're like, let's humor him. 
<laughs> so they bring him to the back cave because his whole plan is to get in there and he's dehydrated some of his goons. He's, yeah. And he's gonna get into the back cave, rehydrate them, and then the goons will like take out Batman. Yeah. But when the when Batman and Robin try to fight the goons, they just dis talk about just disappearing. They just disappear. Like they just yeah. like it goes like like it just pop and yeah. they just go and they're like what's going on and Batman's like yeah like you said Batman's like yeah they, like they've turned he, into antimatter yeah he's like he he's like yeah Penguin didn't do it right so when we hit them they just descended into antimatter he's like where are they he's like they're no longer in this universe <laughs> it's like they literally transcended space and time <laughs> oh, shit we gotta bring Ant-Man in now oh, yeah man. it's like um but yeah it's just like it's he's so it's just, smart it's just like huh or it's like, um, I don't know. I, I can't even think of an example, but it's like, someone will be like, oh, well, why would they do that? And then he just like, plainly just like, well, of course, because blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, wait, was it that obvious? Like, <laughs> like Gordon didn't get that. Like, what? <laughs> and everyone will be like, <laughs> How do you well, there's that? a great moment. Again, like, there's so much. And I feel like we're just repeating ourselves here, but it's just so like it's intentionally fine. funny and dumb. It's, it's just like... So there's an example, like, right, when no they time. when they first have the boat mishap and it disappears or whatever. And, and yes. Batman and Robin go back to Commissioner Gordon with... who Who's, like, right-hand man's, like, this Irish cop. <laughs> um, But they're trying to figure out, like, who, who this could be. And they're analyzing all the details of, of what happens. Yeah. Um, and they're like, oh, this happened at C, C, C for Catwoman. <laughs> that was silly. And there's other <laughs> ones too. That's like, um, you know, they're talking about oh, like what penguin, like what animals are in the sea? Oh, penguins, penguins like the sea, the penguin. <laughs> and then they talk about the joke. It's like they yeah, they played a practical joke on us. Oh, the Joker. It's like ah, this is some devious riddle. Oh, the Riddler. The Riddler. <laughs> It could be any of them. Yeah, and they're like, but it's all. It's all. If we had alluded to it before, they were like, you know, they want to take over the city. He's like, if it was just one of them, maybe. He's like, well, what about like the the state? He's like, if it was two, but they more. literally say that. And they go through. I was like, well, maybe they were taking trying to take over the country. If it was three, I would agree with you. <laughs> but there's four of them. <laughs> I think they're only logical next step. The world. They're taking over the world. And I think the there was the um there was like a logo in the back in the hideout. It was like the Like Gotham it, City Today, Tomorrow the World or something. Yeah, like. something like that. It was like the United They were United like Criminal. The, or, yeah, the or United like, Underground or Underworld. Like, underworld. It's like some United World, United Underworld. <laughs> United Underworld organization <laughs> or something like that. But <laughs> Yeah, Adam West is really delivering, like, kind of like William Shatner vibes, like, from Star Trek, where it's like, every, everything is delivered like this. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, and again, like we said before, this it's such intense, act, particularly from him, mm -hmm. when he is Batman, and even when he's Bruce Wayne. Um, yeah, I don't know how he didn't laugh. Like, <laughs> he just, it's, some of it's just absolutely um, but speaking of the villains, it's really great to see, like, actual Batman villains finally. Because, like, we saw with the two serial films yes, that we watched. Yes, yes, yes. They were different. They were all, like, original villains, but which... This was... Yeah. The wizard was but, definitely... Okay, there was, wasn't even one. There was four. They were all four. <laughs> well, because, again, think, we can't just look at this as a movie. We have to see this as, like, a big event following up the TV show. So, like, we had seen all these characters. Well, sure. But we wanted but, to see them all come together. But sure, but... Jeez, that's oof. Mm -hmm. all in a days and a days and a days and a day's work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. So um, I thought I thought everyone was pretty good. Uh, I thought Cesar Romero was pretty good as the Joker. Like interesting Joker compared to what we've seen before. Like he like he yeah. doesn't really like if only I think the Riddler seemed more like what we think of the Joker as like really. I don't know, like... I thought the Joker... I, I thought the Riddler was, was pretty apt as to how I imagine him. I don't know. No, I don't mean the Riddler wasn't riddler -y. I just mean, like, <laughs> the Joker didn't feel like the Joker in the sense, like... Like, what did he bring to the... I don't see what he brought uh, to the table. 
He was just kind of more like madness, I guess. Because I always, I, I feel like what, what makes the Joker interesting is like he's like an agent of chaos, right? And like yeah. the best versions of the Joker, are like that's what he brings to the narrative where it's like yeah. you never know what he's going to do or what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But he never really got to exhibit that here. Yeah. You know? Um, but Cesar Romero is still a good, he's, it's still a good portrayal, I, yeah, but narratively like the, I don't really like know. The, he, um, I don't know, like the, like, hey, 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 you know, like kind of, I don't, I don't know what you would call that, but like, yeah. um, you know, the, the exuberantness of He was it. pretty exuberant. Um, he was pretty, he was pretty. now that you say that, yeah, he doesn't really, I mean, I thought so. I don't know what he's bringing to this, 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 uh, this quartet. He's just there. Cause he's the Joker. Well, he's gonna throw them off, you know, because they're like, "Oh, it might be the Joker," but it's not. It's like, a, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but um, he was he was like very tame in comparison to like the more um modern examples. That's or, what like, I mean. Like, like it felt very representations. Watered down. Like it, like it's not all like, you know, psychologically scarring and like, like kind of psychotic, like. Like you know, with Joker and like, like Heath Ledger, you know, yeah. or Heath Ledger, and you know, it's like where it's like scary. It was mm -hmm. like simply just like a Joker, you know, just like a not, but not. Yeah, he's more of a jokester. Sure, yeah. The only thing I didn't like about him was that the I like that they had the makeup right, but then because it kind of like brings the character in a little bit more, but then they didn't shave Caesar's mustache. That's one of my trivia points, So you can actually. see it under the makeup. And it just looks silly. Yeah, so my it's actually my first trivia point. <laughs> Cesar Romero, the Joker, refused to shave his mustache during filming. And it was covered with makeup instead. Ugh. <laughs> they should have used prosthetic or something. Oh Prosthetics? My. Just just like a little, just a little over the, you know. He was like, I refuse to shave this. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, yeah, the Riddler was more joker like because he was the he was one... more like how manic and like scheming yeah he was the one who they were like like oh don't do this you know or like like don't you know add like, like joker was something do sensible you know what i mean like yeah like don't put a riddle in there like he'll know or like you know don't shoot off the cannon or whatever like you know but then he does it yeah. anyways and then that's like the whole point of the riddler is like He's just, like, plagued by this narcissism. Like, mm -hmm. that's, like, what... He even says he's, like, that's, like, the highlight. That's, like, my only thing I, like, enjoy in life is, like... Oh, really? Is, like, rid is like riddling that man. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yes, yes, yes. Like, like, I didn't know he's supposed to be a narcissist, though. A narcissist in the sense that it's, like... Well, they they talk about that with better. serial killing, where it's, like, serial killers who leave clues. Yeah. Because they think they're so smart that, like, even if I leave clues, they still won't Yeah, yeah, get me. okay. That's, yeah. like, the whole idea of, like, Zodiac. Right? Like, yeah, and, yeah. And things like that, even right? Though he gets them right away, but... You know, Batman, at you, least, yeah. you would think he would have changed up, you know, he would have switched up his routine, but I guess not. Maybe become the puzzler? Like, the like puzzler. visual, Like visual puzzles that you have to, like, <laughs> you have to try to solve, like... There was, in the new ones, right? There was the thing with the hamster... Maybe, maybe. There was, like... I wonder about, like, those video games where, like, visual puzzles, you have to, like, or oh, spatial yes, puzzles yes, you gotta yes. figure out. Like, oh, like, the ones where it's, like, you gotta connect the, the power... Yeah, yeah. It's, like... <laughs> Like, in all video games, there's always, like, obligatory puzzle sections. Where yes. you just, like, in the Spider-Man games. Yes, 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 um, that's exactly what Bioshock is infamous for those. Um, Ratchet and Clank, you saw me playing those. Yes, and I was yes, like, yes. I was like, God damn it! <laughs> those of them are hard. But anyway. I know, I know. Maybe he should be the puzzler. DC, also, if you're listening to this. The, the comic books have to produce. There's so many different comic book series. For over the past hundred years and they have and they gotta make one of these a month so in some comic book somewhere there has to have been a, a villain named the puzzler somewhere <laughs> that's too obvious of an idea for the, that know. not to exist if i searched the puzzler comics i'm sure something would come you know what? sure i'm sure i'm, I'm gonna sure. do it right now but you know what i would like to have a discussion well i guess we can't really have a discussion i i need to ask he's a dc comic book character the puzzler <laughs> DC Comics character is a name used by three supervillains in the DC. So there's three puzzlers. Three? What? Um, oh my goodness. Anywho, I would just like to. I thought that I got the general sense of the character of the Penguin, right? 
you know, I I've seen the Tim Burton one and you where know. Danny DeVito plays him. Yeah, you know, I you know, and I, I have I not actually of... seen that yet. The Bat- that's Batman Returns. That's like the second. Tim is Burton that the one. is that the only one? I know that's it... the one with Catwoman and. Okay, then I think that's the one. Yeah. So, you know, and I kind of know and have seen, like, you know, the little cartoons and whatnot and the little movies. But, like... Colin Farrell, unrecognizably in the (laughs) new one. Yes. As, as like, Tony Soprano, basically. Oh, my God. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. he Unrecognizable. Wow. Um, But I am very confused as to the character makeup of the penguin in this movie. He, well, of course he's, you know... Well, like he's got a, pointy nose. He's supposed to be like a penguin. It looks like a I, penguin. I understand the nose. Oh, what's wrong with his makeup? I, I didn't say anything about the makeup, if you'd let me finish. Oh, oh. He, well, he's got the pointy nose, and he waddles, and he says... Wah, 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 right? But then his henchmen are pirates. They're like pirate-themed. Yeah, and he'll but be then, like... He'll be like... Pirates! And then they'll go, Yo-ho! <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like yes, but yes then, sir. But then... He's got the thing with the umbrellas. And then they ride in the night sky like witches on brooms, on, uh, yeah. on, brooms, on umbrellas and yeah. kidnap people. <laughs> yeah. What is his deal? I don't know. That's a good question. Penguins are pirates with umbrellas? I think they were just kind of throwing everything at the wall and seeing what, what stuck, what, you know? What is his story? Is he like Shark Boy? Why did, why From does, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Why is his nose so pointy? And why does he quack and water? Well, not quack, but... I don't know. I think he's just kind of like... Kind of pleased with himself. He's like, ha <laughs> Like, you know, people go like, ha <laughs> but he kind of just comes along like, <laughs> you know? I feel like... The way that all of these... I'm trying to say this in a... In a... In a not oh God, what are you about to say? <laughs> I just feel like like sometimes the the performances of the um of the villains very much seemed like they were like just like the weird kids in school, like I don't know, doing like cosplay or like uh, just mm-hmm. like pretending or I don't know, doing some like. It was just like the weird kid in school sometimes. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you're a bully. No! I think you were the weird kid in school. I was! But I just, but I wasn't the weird kid who, who acted like a cat and who meowed. That's true. A sidebar, I love how like, there's always like these conservative <laughs> like, fake, they're, they're usually like fake. It'll be like, schools allowing kids to use litter boxes because they identify as cats. <laughs> Which are just used to basically like as like a backdoor way to demonize trans people. But what? it's like I guess- even if that were true, kids have been pretending to be fucking cats and dogs <laughs> in elementary schools for decades. Well, guess- and no one had a problem with it then. It was always fucking weird. <laughs> well, I guess I guess it's like with like furries, you know, because that's how they identify, but I guess it's like what. No, but furries don't actually identify as. I've seen someone who identifies. Oh. Yeah, I watched well, them identify okay. as like. My point being is that like those news stories are just used as like for fear mongering. No, yeah, so we'll yeah. So be like, what's next? No, yeah, that's obviously fake. But like, I feel like it, it's only possible because of like what Sebastian Maniscalco said, who is like, people were always doing weird shit. But now they just they just have a way to talk to each other on the internet. On the yeah. internet so back, like, back in the back fifty years ago, if you like to dress up as a baby, nobody knew it. <laughs> now you can go on online forums. I like, like to dress up as a baby. <laughs> Before you know, it, you got a hundred of them at the Hilton <laughs> for a baby convention. <laughs> anyway, exactly. They are not analogous to trans people. Hashtag trans lives what? matter. Trans rights. Furries and trans. That's not the same. No, I know, but I'm saying people will then be like, oh, like the logical, like oh, next thing oh, after oh. letting people change their pronouns <laughs> is they're gonna change their species. <laughs> the same thing, like with gay marriage, people were like, what's next? Marrying your dog? <laughs> it always goes to animals because they view <laughs> queer people as animals. Which is so weird. Well, I have seen, you know, like the My Strange Addiction or whatever, someone married their car. And then some man was in love mm. with balloons, but 
Oh, and then this one lady. Can, we should bring this back. Hold on, this oh. one lady. She was in love with this video game character, and she married him. This I don't know this Japanese lady. And, and no, I mean the character, not the lady. Oh, I don't know it's some some video game. Because if it was Mario, I would understand. No, it's not Mario. It was like one of the tall anime that, guys. The man literally traverses different dimensions to save his woman. Is there any better expression of love? Anyway, <laughs> speaking of adult people who act like animals. So wait, like we said, Catwoman. <laughs> Catwoman is like the main villain of this. But we're first introduced to her. She's like pretending to be the Soviet lady. Yes. Like a Soviet reporter. So even though it does not really play into it at all, it's interesting. Like, again, my theory how every Batman movie reflects the political climate of the time. Yeah. So it's like the villain is pretending to be a Soviet person. Or, <laughs> yeah. Um... But she ends up having kind of a fling as her Soviet persona with Bruce Wayne, oh who she gosh. doesn't know is Batman. He falls in love. Batman, that's the thing. So I think I read about this in my trivia. It's Adam West, broken. you know, agreed to do the film on probably not the Soul Condition. I'm sure he got a shit ton of money. But to like, do more Bruce, I think. But he more. really wanted to have a chance to be Bruce Wayne more, because mm-hmm. um, he spends like ninety. I think in the show he spends like ninety percent of his time as Batman, mm-hmm. and Bruce, he's only ever Bruce Wayne like out of like plot necessity yeah and never just like because it'll be interesting to see him as Bruce Wayne sure I think like all of like the goofiness aside I think Adam West actually is like a great Bruce Wayne Mm -hmm. I think he's charismatic yeah he's 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 very handsome right he's he's not like the other guy who was just like I'm so tired I'm just so I just don't care about any of that (laughs) there's definitely an element where he's like really overplaying it here he's like very schmoozy and schmaltzy Mm -hmm. but like within the within like the rules of like this world it works it really really works um Mm -hmm. so that's yeah that's one of the plot points like you brought up that you know the villains are like we're gonna kidnap Bruce Wayne and Batman will of course come to rescue him and then Batman will fall in our trap yeah, and their trap is to land on like this specific point in their lair that will catapult him into the ocean, <laughs> and he'll get eaten by his like exploding octopus. Yes, um, because I guess penguin does bomb stuff. Too? Has like lots of animals, like the shark and the. Well, sure, that makes it, but I guess he like does bombs. But I thought that was like a. He does bombs. He's a bomb guy now. I thought that was someone else's thing. Wasn't that someone else's thing? You're thinking of bomb voyage from The Incredibles. What? No! The French guy in the beginning, the, like the mind. No! Villain. Isn't that like Harley's thing or no? Like someone. I don't know. Someone. It doesn't... In the... Well, I know that one guy from. No one has a monopoly on bombs. He can do bombs. Well, there, sometimes. But they're not bombs. It's an exploding octopus. It's not a bomb. Okay, well, the, the bomb is in the octopus. That's why it explodes. It oh. doesn't just explode because well, it was a magical to. octopus. No. Oh. Anywho, a goon gets boing. Yeah, but eventually, yeah. So, so yeah, so so the the Catwoman, as the Soviet lady, goes to see Bruce Wayne about interviewing him, whatever, starts schmoozing him. And Batman doesn't know that. They, it's funny because neither of them know who they really are. Yeah. It's not like one of them knows that Bruce is Batman or, or that the Soviet lady is Catwoman, right? Yeah. So they kind of start to develop a... And I think it's implied that she kind of does fall for him a little bit a little yeah um not too much so they agree to not go on a date much. but then she like uses some i think i think the, some gas that, that knocks him out right and they bring bruce to their lair i forget why no some... no no they're they're in the they go back to her apartment oh that's right that's right that's right, that's right. they go back to her because he's like can we go back to your place i'm like oh my god they're gonna fuck <laughs> This is incredible. They basically, yeah, they basically talk like they are, like. <laughs> but then the three villains bust through the window. Major brawl. It's so fucking funny. Um, but ultimately Bruce gets thwarted or or subdued, and then they bring him back to their lair, right? Yeah. Um, and, and again, they're like, "Why isn't Batman showing up?" Yeah. <laughs> that was silly. But Bruce is able to get free wherever. But yeah, so that, that's that's how oh, he... During a big fight so... scene, one of the goons lands on the catapult and he goes, Yo! And they just shoot like a... I think production-wise, they just saw a mannequin out of a cannon. Probably. So you just see this lifeless body just like fly <laughs> in the air and land in the, in the water. Oh um, man, but it was so sad because... Well, it was so messed up and then it was sad because... Because um, Catwoman was still pretending to be Katya on, in the lair. Flash on the fake boat. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, 
like even so once Bruce he he turns into Batman or whatever he's saving the day he goes back to save her he goes back to save her oh my gosh because he doesn't know <laughs> that was like happened. oh he's he's been fooled <laughs> later he realizes that you just see like he just like he like tries uh, not to cry and he's like oh just a day in the life of a crime fighter yeah uh I, I kind of felt bad for him. No, I yeah, I like, felt bad. I was like, oh, man. I mean, don't fall for it's, it. It's definitely played for laughs. Yeah. But, like, it also, like, if you're a kid, it's not. That's the thing about the show is that it's not played for. It, it, it doesn't really. I always talk about threading the needle, right? Of, mm-hmm. like, kind of being able to take two things that are kind of hard to balance and doing mm-hmm. them both. Yeah. The, I think this movie really does thread the needle of being both funny but also, like, if you're a kid, like, if I was a kid, this would be fucking hilarious, right? Like, because it's like, it, that, it, when he finds out that, oh, like, she was just playing him, mm-hmm. it's played for last, but at the same time, if I was a kid, I'd be like, oh, that's sad. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it does oh, yeah. a good job of kind of doing both. Yeah. That's and I didn't what... think it would be able to do both. Yeah, that's what I thought, because, like, the whole time I was like, oh, this is so silly. Like, Batman can't save him because it's Bruce. And, like, you know. Oh, she, you know, how do you not tell that Katya is Catwoman? Like, you know, so it was like kind of like a funny like inside joke or whatever. But like when when he finds out, then it's like, oh, like it's not funny anymore. <laughs> that joke isn't funny anymore. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> um, also sidebar, Batman and Robin are fully deputized agents of the law. Are they? Yeah, at one point, like, they're talking about Batman and Robin doing something, and someone's like, you can't say that or do that to them. They're fully deputized agents of the law. Like, which is different than other versions of Batman, where he's, like, he's always working outside the law, no, and there's this, cooperation. But in this, like, they are technically deputized. No, yeah. They're allowed, this I guess, one? because maybe they didn't want to insinuate crime. Like, you should you should take the law into your own hands to kids. So they were like, well, don't I mean, worry, he's think, been deputized. I mean, think about the 60s. Yeah, a lot of people were doing that, so it makes sense. But this is also very pro-cop, which... But, well, all of it is. Yeah, I mean, all no, the Batman stuff is... Well, no, I would say that a lot of the times he's working either, you know, against them, in spite of them, or, you know, well, whatever. Well, but this is like... He's kind of not as much as the other one, I think, where like he's like literally dropping off people, like involved, like part of. Yeah. But um, you know, like the fucking they fucking salute him, but like yeah. you know. <laughs> they, well, we we talked about this in our previous episodes on Batman, but again, it's it's one of those things where on one hand you have a lot of media about Batman, you know. Like, the police are represented, not just, like, a few bad apples, but, like, systemically, there's a problem, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's almost never due isn't. to police misconduct and violence. It's always due to, like, corruption yeah. and bribery. Yeah. Not, like, the things that, like, are really pressing today. hmm So that's number one. But then number two, again, Batman kind of, again, even though he is not a cop and he is, conf- he is in conflict with the police... Mm-hmm. The idea of Batman kind of fulfills this, like, wet dream of what policing could be. It's like, if we only we weren't restrained by, like, Miranda rights oh, and, like, the Constitution. That's an you know interesting what I mean? way of looking at it. Do you know what I mean? Like, again, that's, thought of that that's like, kind of, that's like the allure of, like, I think, not not the allure, but I think it's, it's part of the allure of characters like Batman, where it's like, he's able to out- exercise, he's able to work outside of the law usually compromising people's rights. Huh. Do you know I, what I mean? I have never thought of that before. I, I mean, mean I've already made this joke, I've already made this rant in the last episode, but no, again, I know, yeah. when Batman, does he ask them any questions? No, Does no. he read them their rights? No, he just finally, he just, he's like, I think they're the ones who are up, I'm gonna beat the shit out of these guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I guess, yeah, it does. In, you know, in the Dark Knight, he literally goes to Hong Kong mm-hmm. because they can't extradite this guy. He goes to Hong Kong and kidnaps him and brings it back to Gotham so he can stand trial. Because legally they can't, because the Chinese won't extradite him. What? So the guy, so so Gordon and Harvey Dent are like, can you can you can you go get him? <gasps> they ask him. I think I think they just say we need him back. He's like, if I get him to you, can you get him to talk? And he's like, yeah. 
So oh. Batman's like, okay, I'm gonna go to China and, oh and get it. Oh my god. Him. Right? So, so, again, I that makes they're... sense. I've never thought of that or, or like, or in that way, but like, like, it always just seems like a guy. So, like, of course, it's not gonna be like that, but I guess that is a way to be like, like hey, without bureaucracy. That's like... the thing. The issues with policing isn't the red tape. The red tape is what makes it not be even worse. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of problems with policing, but it's not the red tape. Uh, you know what I mean? Was it... Most oh. time, most problems are because the cops are able to do things that they shouldn't be able to, not because they're not able to do things that they need to. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's always this argument, like... And that's a recurring theme in a lot of, like... Like, serial killer movies where it's, like... Or, or shows where it's, like... They, they, they're, they're, hands, they're hamstrung by... Yeah. The rules, and, and it's like they have to. Like, have to yeah. So they, 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 you know, they break into someone's apartment illegally. They do like illegal yeah, search, or, or like yeah, we were, you know I mean? we were like, just watching Lilo and Stitch, and <laughs> John Pleakley was so sad when they got fired, but Jumbo was so happy. He was like, "Now we can do things my way." And <laughs> interesting, I guess, comparison, but yeah, yeah I know. Was, you know what I'm saying? He's not. He's not. You know, by the he's been on. He was he was on a leash, a, and now he's been. Un- yeah, and then he fucking, like, blows up their entire house. Yeah. But it, I also... Well, you know why I brought that up was because it's something recent. But also, when I saw Jumba um, stepping on Sh- Stitch, you know, like, when he's, like, squishing him with his big giant foot, uh-huh. I was like, ooh, Eric. <sighs> Reminded me of Eric Gardner. Um, and I was like, shit. Um, I'm sorry. I don't like to talk about politics on this show. Bro, you just <laughs> talked about fucking late stage capitalism. <laughs> what? But but anyway, so I, I I we've already talked about this, so I won't talk about this for much longer, right? But but again, that is an element with Batman where it's like, even the even the stories that are very critical of cops, there is like this idea of like, what law enforcement could be like, right? Or or rather or rather, it's like this cathartic like, oh. Like, in a lot of ways, Batman is it's immoral what he's doing in a lot of ways, right? And the idea, not that what law enforcement could be, but it's like this cathartic release of like, if only, if only there was a real Batman who could do what the police can't, which is go beat up petty criminals. You know what I mean? I guess. I've just always thought of it as the one dude, you know? Just... Well, that's not, what I'm saying about like, like one dude who's unrestrained like... by anyone, he answers to no one. No, I know, but like one dude, not like oh my gosh, we should all be like that. No, I'm like, not saying it's meant to like, be a model for yeah. all of policing. I'm saying the idea of that's the way we solve our crime problems, that individuals take action. I, got I mean, it's unfortunate. Again, you, by the time you're listening to this episode, I think this is August, but what just happened in New York was you had that homeless guy, uh, Jordan Neely, who, you didn't hear about this? No. Jordan Neely was, um, of course, African-American, um, homeless, mental health issues, some drug issues. <gasps> Was kind of not not quite tweaking out, but he was he was having a mental health oh, the episode. Seizure? No, uh, he was have he was, was getting very he was, to be fair he was getting very aggressive and belligerent with people. Yeah. Um, so this guy, this white guy, puts him in a chokehold and he died. This was on the New York subway just, just the last week. What? Just a guy? Yep. Not even the police, just a guy. What the fuck? What? I can't believe you haven't heard about this. This is this no. Is, this is. We live here. I know. I don't people know. were protesting. People were on the subway tracks protesting, like stopping all the train. Like, I mean, not the day it happened, but like as protests, like stop because like the police basically like are kind of like, eh, like they haven't arrested the guy yet. Like they haven't arrested him. Nope. I mean, as of the time of this recording, I don't think so. No. Oh my um, god. But anyway, so that's what I'm saying. I'm not talking about the police looking like we as police officers should be able to do what Batman does. But what I'm you, saying is there's like this cathartic release yeah. of like sit like Trayvon Martin, like this idea of like this cathartic like like or like regular people who don't have to answer to anybody. Yeah. Take take action. Yeah. Right. And that's, again, but but this that's, movie does not wrestle with <laughs> any of this. So maybe let's save that, this for the movies that we that really, they really do. That's really unfortunate because I because you would think like it's more than unfortunate. Yeah. No, I know. It's just like. Ugh, like, why did people, like, interpret it like that? Like, he would, like, do it for good. He's not just doing it for the hell of it. 
He's doing it for good because these people are actually like, you know, Joker's like, oh, I'm gonna like flood the whole fucking city. Or like, <laughs> see, the next thing, I don't have problems with that. You know, my, like, my issues are, are when Batman's dealing with just like petty crime. No, yeah. Like, and not even petty crime, but like, you know, like real crime, like someone's about to get mugged and murdered or raped. Like, I'm not saying that, like, that's petty crime. But what I'm saying is like, when it comes to like realistic crime, well, when, he's, when he's trying to stop the Joker, from like doing something jokery, that's one thing, right? Like, yeah, but. blowing up like yeah, or like or like when Scarecrow was like trying to do the scary gas on like the whole city. That's like completely different, yeah. right? Because that's like that's that, there's it's no analogical terrorism. Right? <laughs> but but again, like and we'll talk about when we watch The Dark Knight. But again, it's like yeah. it's very much based on the idea of the war on terror, where by the end, Batman has tapped into every phone in the city to create a map to be able to find the Joker, oh. and Morgan Freeman's character. Who up like creates his tech? Yeah, is like this is wrong, Eesh. and he's like, I have to find this guy. It's like, yeah. uh, Osama bin Laden, cough, cough. Uh. Right? It's like, what are we doing? Because by two thousand eight, we hadn't caught. We hadn't, you know, I mean, no, this was pre his death. So, yeah. you know, like I said, Batman, he reflects the political climate of the time. You know what I mean? Not every single movie we are going to talk Why about does that, but Batman. Uh. Um, but oh, the man. film. Let's talk. Let, can we talk about this film? We're getting on a big tangent here. This film, of all the Batman films, this is the least political. It's the most <laughs> silly. Um, it's speaking of silliness. Again, we talk about kind of like very interesting visuals. Like there's like there's a concerted effort, especially when they're in like the villain's lair. Like a lot of slanted angles. Like I think I remarked to you. Like mm-hmm. it feels like a comic book panel. Yeah. Um, that I thought was a lot of fun. The shot. Yeah, you just said the shot. Um. Too. But huh, again, right. it's just a lot of fun. It's just it's just a fun movie. There's one part where Batman is kind of sassy to the Navy because like the bad guys are using like a submarine that oh. the Navy just like they just had like surplus submarines, so they just like sold it. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, we sold it to a guy. Um P N Gwyn. He's like, P N Gwyn? <laughs> like Penguin? He's like, Yeah, now that you mention it, did we some did we do something we shouldn't have? And he's like, nah, whatever. Like <laughs> And it's just like, and like I said, like everyone in this universe is just an idiot except for Batman. Um, yeah. But again, there are like these stressful situations that I'm imagining where, like, when you're a kid, we're probably like actually very exciting. Like, I imagine this show was like good entertainment for a kid in like 1960s, right? Sure, yeah. Maybe. You know, like when Batman, like, Batman's there's one part where they're about to shoot a torpedo at, at Batman and they're trying to use like mag- reverse magnetization oh and, and they're God, able to keep deflecting it. And then it seems like they actually got hit. Mm-hmm. But then, like, you see them speeding away on their boat, and they're like, luckily, that selfless porpoise threw himself in front of the torpedo. <laughs> oh, my God. The fucking bomb scene where he... <laughs> oh, my God. It's it iconic. Like five minutes of him trying to find where to throw this bomb. But there's a nun. There's a mom with a baby. There's, a marching band. There's a marching band. There's ducks. There's lovers kissing in a boat. <laughs> And then the, at one point he's like, like, sometimes you just can't get rid of a bomb. <laughs> and I love how this is like the goofy version of the end of The Dark Knight Rises, where Batman literally has to like take the nuke out of Gotham City. <laughs> it's like literally the same thing, basically. Um, but yeah, and then at, and then when he is able to throw the bomb away, you know, because because they start with the bomb in Joker in the in the not Joker um, like the villain's lair, which is above like a CD bar, like a CD uh, tavern, yes, right? Yes, yes. And and after Batman's able to dispose of the bomb, Robin is like, you know, why why were you why did you so concerned about saving those those drunks in there? And he was like, Robin, even their lives can be salvaged. <laughs> and it's like, what? <laughs> like it's that so was like, weird. <laughs> it's like just so random, right? Um, but um, what else here? Again, I. Let us know in the comments. This is a little more free form. This is or this is more like our earlier episodes when we first started this series. Um, yeah. there's oh, but I will say is the brawl we did get. I, I was glad to see. Not for there weren't many fight scenes, but when there were, they were huge brawls. <laughs> a lot more choreographed than the other ones, which made them funnier. Mm-hmm. Um, very jazzy, like it had like a jazz score, and every time someone got punched, it would be like a bow, oh my bow. God. yes, and, and then and then the classic the text it would have the letters. Ker-plop. Ker-plop. zoink, <laughs> scat. <laughs> um, but it's it's. Is just so corny and dumb, and it's just, 
It's. I think. It, I think it went through that period where it was acceptable then, and then became corny, and then like we went backwards, and like it kind of became entertaining again. Mm-hmm. Right. Um. And like again, like we said, like those riddles are just so funny. Mm-hmm. Um. And then one it's last. Like what goes? What goes up? Or what is white that goes up and comes down? White and yellow. I was like, what? It's like a ballpoint banana. <laughs> no, a, a, an egg. Oh. <laughs> there was something about a ballpoint banana, which yeah, I don't they, really understand. They did say something weird about that. I don't know. Which apparently is a thing. Yeah, I guess I think it's like a type of banana, maybe, or I don't know. Um, so, so the long story of this plot, right? So, like we said, the villains um, dehydrate the world leaders from you know Israel and, and West Germany and the USSR, yes. right? Because this is the sixties, yes. and. There and then they have all the dust, or whatever, in all of these little like test tubes. Oh my god! But luckily, you know that they they defeat all the villains. Uh, there's a big climactic battle on the submarine, but then they accidentally like they all get knocked over and they and they but shatter. This was after they they hit the submarine like with five different torpedoes, and it was like literally laying on its side, teetering back and forth, but it did not break. Right, and then. But then, and, and it was like, okay, phew, luckily they stayed intact. Who knows what would have happened if they, if they had, you know, broken. And then the British guy who started all of this with his whisk, with his machine, comes in. He's like, I've been very upset about my crew and what's going on with this boat. And he like trips. They, they didn't bring him his tea. Bring him his tea. And he trips and knocks over all the things and they all shatter. And then he sneezes and he blows up and goes to So Batman and Robin have to do like some like jujitsu science in order to like they, recombine them all. They have like a... a a particle separator or something. A particle recombiner thing. Yeah, it was like, something like that. <laughs> and then Robin at one point is suggesting eugenics, I think. He's like, he's like, you know, if we have this opportunity, shouldn't we make them, maybe make them better? I didn't know what he meant by that. I think he was just saying like, because like the world is so troubled no, now. I like mean- we made the leaders like better people that but, like they would all said, come together and solve their problems we made it sound like he was for eugenics and like trying to fix their no it, problems. but it sounded it sounded like it was like like features he was like features or like like aspects of them or something so it was like whoa robin does he want to what make them like white what yeah like, and then batman's like what no are, robin what is even he we refer- even we even we shouldn't meddle with the laws i was like nature. what the fuck is he referring to <laughs> Yeah, it's just... It's that was bizarre. weird. So, they're able to put them all back together, but now they all speak the wrong languages? <laughs> different language. And they're all just like... And Batman's like, let's sneak out the window. <laughs> He's like, let's be... So, well, everyone's in the room. He's like, let's inconspicuously sneak go out the window. Sneak out the window. <laughs> and they go out, and, and and that's the movie. And it's just... Yeah. It's, it's 105 minutes of pure con candy goofiness like yeah. so much fun it's pretty fun makes me want to watch the tv show now <laughs> um again maybe you know if listeners what we would love to do is to do like some bonus material but we, oh. we we barely have time to do the main series right so but ideally if we get enough listeners i'd love to like create a patreon where you can sign up for like a dollar or something for a month but then we'll do like the tv shows of some of these franchises so like well maybe we'll watch the will we get that time well if if we get a bajillion listeners all all paying a dollar a month that's a bajillion dollars a month <laughs> so we can a bajillion well yeah i want i, I want to pick a realistic number <laughs> not like bazillion <laughs> bajillion anyway um but anyway, so I'm just saying that I think this movie is a lot of fun. Um, I don't, I don't know if it's like one of my favorite movies ever, but it's definitely super fun, and and I, I really enjoyed it. Reptilian. Repti- what? <laughs> yeah, maybe I should be writing more notes uh, on the movie because th- th- this mean, episode's only been. It's not that deep, you know. It's like just. There's not a lot to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, like I thought. It's like you just gotta watch it. Like, there's not much to say about it. I thought we would have a lot more to say, but then, like, when I think about, like, what's the actual story, then I'm like, oh, yeah, then, uh, well, it's like this, and then this, and yeah. then that's it. We're gonna have a lot of short episodes this season, because, again, some of these movies are only, like, 70 minutes long. Mm-hmm. Right? So, some of these are real bargain bin. Like, I didn't, like, no one has ever seen some of these. <laughs> 
things. I'm so excited to <laughs> talk about them. Um, but that's okay. I don't think we have to make everything long if it doesn't. That's true, yeah. But but our fans have come to expect two hour, two and a half hours sometimes. Well, we can we can talk more about stuff, but you want to keep it on track. So I'm trying to keep it on track. Should I do some trivia? Sure. Okay. Adam West agreed to do the... F- oh, I already talked about this. Wanting more screen time. That's Bruce Wayne. Um, in the final fight scene, a stuntman playing one of the villain's henchmen dove into the water and hit his head on a metal stud at the... Don't read it! I, I was listening to what you were saying. Um, and hit his head on a metal stud at the bottom of the pond. He was knocked unconscious and had to be rushed to the hospital. <gasps> oh, my. He was okay, but... Yeah, that's hilarious, though. Oh, my goodness. Why was there a metal stud at the bottom of the pond? I don't know. That's a good question. Ah! Um, scenes uh, shot... This is really funny. Scenes shot in the Arch Criminal's headquarters lair were filmed in a, in a Dutch angle, right? So that, that yeah. slanted angle. I thought it was to emulate a comic book. Mm-hmm. But apparently this was intentional and was meant to show that the four villains were crooked. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, at the end of the film, one of the United World delegates is seen banging his shoe on the table while yelling. This is a parody of Nikita Khrushchev, who was, like, the head of the Soviet Union yeah. in, like, the 50s and 60s. Um, it's a parody of his famous behavior during a debate at the United Nations um, in 1960. There's like a famous moment where he's, like, debating, he's, like, banging his shoe on the table. I did see that. I do remember that. It's um, funny. Adam West points out um, how fake the shark looks in the film's most memorable scene. Of course. He also notes how unhappy the producers were of the sound aid when Batman's hitting it. Wes says he told them the sound doesn't matter because the shark looks so fake anyway. <laughs> I think they all understood, like, you just, it's not that kind of movie. <laughs> what? Um, Adam West, again, I think he's talked a lot about that. Because, again, he, he unfortunately didn't, he kind of got typecasted. So he didn't. I don't understand how that happens. He They're didn't like really get to have hero. a super like a superhero like the same thing with that other guy I think because they're like oh if we cast this guy like all people will see is Adam West Uh, all they'll see is Batman they won't see whatever character he's not no what what does everyone see Morgan Freeman and think that he's God no um well Morgan Freeman's like one of the greatest actors ever no I know he's able to transcend but you also said that it that he kind of did this but then uh, I forgot the word you used but then Batman also did that for him. Was this his first? No, his I don't first think it was his first role. But it's definitely his biggest. Is this He's... the trajectory one? The trajectory one. Explain. Like, like he was small and now he's big. Probably something like that. Okay. I will say. Okay. I, I, will, I, did, I did not do enough research Spearhead. on Adam West's filmography. Spearheaded, I think you might have said. I don't know. Pioneered. Pioneered. Um... Adam West points out that the device that launched Batman up the bat pole. Oh yeah, so there's a, so they're able to go up the bat pole. That's there's right. like a like a compressed air yes. that like will shoot him up. Um, he po- Adam West points out that that device didn't always work the way it was planned, and the steam uh, that shot out of the device always caused him pain. "Quote: It was right up my effing cape." <laughs> um, produced by 20th Century Fox, which owned the film rights to Batman before DC was purchased by Warner Brothers. Um, ironically, Fox would later release films based on Marvel comics, such as X-Men, Deadpool, Daredevil, Fantastic Four, before both Fox and Marvel were purchased by Disney. That makes this film possibly the only DC the only DC adaptation now owned by Disney. Hmm. Interesting. How strange. Though I guess they H Warner Brothers has the rights to put it on Max. <laughs> Max. Formerly known as HBO Max. <laughs> um Burgess Meredith, who who played Penguin lost his fake penguin nose one day in the prop periscope. Uh, Adam West remembers that they had to stop filming one day to find it. He also mentions Meredith... He also mentions that that uh, Meredith who played Penguin sold that nose off to a fan. <laughs> oh, Burgess. Uh, Adam West claims he had to run around with the prop bomb, bomb for five hours to film the sea where Batman is get rid of the smoking bomb. Quote, it's a good thing I was a jock or I don't know if I would have been able to do it. What? Um, the the crest on Bruce Wayne's blazer was an in joke. It has a saying in Latin sewn into it, but Adam West notes that it means something nonsensical. He doesn't quite remember, but he thinks it was something like quote Don't be a cheeseburger. <laughs> okay. It didn't mean anything. it was just a nonsensical Latin. Something sounded cool. <laughs> Don't be a cheeseburger. Um, Adam West and Burt Ward, who played Robin, 
did not actually fly in the back copter as neither, neither were licensed helicopter pilots. Okay. The copter was flown by costumed pilots. So they had real pilots <laughs> dressed up as the, for like the wide shots. Of course, of course. Um, in a humorous scene, all four villains are holding their breath to avoid breathing the penguin sedative um, at the United World mm-hmm. um, organization. Yeah, Apparently, that. none of them thought of using a gas mask when scheming to use the sedative to knock out the guards. <laughs> That's true. I thought that was silly. It's like you knew you were about to use gas. Also, you didn't come with a gas mask? Also, the, the penguin is just impervious because he made it or something. While in the back cave and needing water for a plant, the penguin accidentally uses a device that provides him with heavy water. Heavy water slash deuterium oxide um, is a form of water that contains only deuterium rather than the hydrogen one isotope. In its pure form, heavy water has a density um, about 11% greater than regular water. It is typically used as a component for nuclear reactors. Oh, okay. That makes sense. But I just thought it meant like a heavy flow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like one was like oh just little no I think it has like extra protons but or now yeah. yes it makes sense now it makes sense yeah. um, at one point in the film Robin and Alfred Pennyworth use a surveillance camera to spy on Batman and Catwoman's date mm-hmm. once they see the couple kissing a frustrated Robin switches off the screen Alfred instead notes that it would be more prudent to keep watching some online texts take the dialogue as a hint that Alfred is a voyeur No, a voyeur is like someone who is like seeing something. Yeah. Voyeur, like voyeurism, like you like to watch people have sex and you do, and they don't know that you're watching. No. That's like what voyeurism is. No. Yes. <laughs> um, and then lastly, several locations mentioned in the movie are based on real locations in and around New York City. For example, Concord Ave is a play on Lexington Avenue, as with the Battle of Concord and Lexington in the Revolution. And at the end of the movie, Robin mentions Short Island Sound, New York, has a um, Short Island Sound instead of Long Island Sound, <laughs> which I did not pick up on. Um, so let's talk about the critical reception. Yes. Okay. So, Rotten Tomatoes is an 80%, mm-hmm. which I think is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and the critical cons- consensus is, quote, Batman the movie elevates camp to an art form and has a blast doing it every gloriously tongue-in-cheek inch of the way. Um, so again, I think it was pretty well received at the time. It just didn't do like gangbusters at the box office, I think. Yeah. Um, in terms of more modern, well, people were busy in the sixties. Yeah, you know they were doing stuff, like living. Um, so in terms of more it's modern protesting. reception, going to war. Yeah, that's true. But by '66, that it was just starting. I don't know if that was an excuse yet. Um, modern uh, in terms of like modern reception on Letterbox it has a 3.3 out of 5 so kind of low I'm surprised um, many of the reviews are just ridiculous quotes from the movie <laughs> which I think is very apt for this um, here are some Letterbox reviews per our new tradition here yes. um, Cookie <laughs> writes they didn't need to make any su- any more superhero movies after this one this about covered it all nice Branson Reese writes this is the only Batman movie that makes any goddamn sense <laughs> Which I don't disagree with. Uh, and then Emma Stefanski writes, quote, reject, mo- reject modernity, a.k.a. Riddler in a gimp mask and normal clothes. <laughs> Embrace tradition, a.k.a. Riddler in a lime green three-piece suit with question marks all over it. <laughs> yes. I, that's the thing I will say is, like, there's just something so fun and delightful about this. That's and how, I love... That's how I think of the Riddler. Yeah, and, and I... And listen to me, I love like the modern versions of Batman like again more than this but there's just something aesthetically about this that I just love yeah it's like the animated show but even more colorful even more ridiculous mm-hmm. right um so uh, in terms of the legacy um of this again this is something new we're doing is we're talking about like, the legacy like what what the impact was yeah. kind of, so the series stars uh Adam West and Burt Ward were typecast for decades afterwards with West especially finding himself unable to escape the reputation of a hammy camp actor. Right? He likes ham? Hammy just means goofy, <laughs> over the top. Um, I thought that's what camp means. Years after the series' impact faded, an episode of Batman the Animated Series in the 90s paid tribute to West with an episode titled Beware the Grey Ghost. In this episode, West himself provided the voice of an aging star of a superhero television series that Bruce Wayne had watched as a child and from which he later found inspiration as Batman. Hmm. 
Hmm. Right? This gave West new popularity with the next generation of fans. So it's kind of like a weird, like, almost meta... Interesting. ...thing where it's, yeah, like, he's playing a actor mm -hmm. who played a TV superhero yeah. that was then typecast, but that TV superhero is, like, what inspired Bruce Wayne to be Batman, kind of. Yeah, I heard what you said. I thought what I had written sounded confusing, so I was reiterating. No. Oh. Um, a sequel idea was also thrown around during the second and third season of the show. Mm -hmm. There was no script or working title, but the idea was to introduce Barbara Gordon as Batgirl, Harvey Harvey Dent as Two-Face, uh, Poison Ivy, and an array of new gadgets and vehicles. However, Fox words, uh, they were not interested, partly due to the racial concerns that Eartha Kitt was chosen to portray Catwoman. So that's the thing about the show. The show, there was, there was an actress... Yeah. Who couldn't be in this movie, so you had a different actress. Yeah. But then eventually that original actress left the show, and Eartha Kitt played Catwoman for, like, the last season of the show. Oh, she just left entirely. Oh, yeah, so, interesting. Yeah, um, so at this point, when they were thinking about the show, they were concerned about having a black woman play Catwoman in a movie. Um, Eartha Kitt's fucking awesome. I, I know. I'm not sure... They're movie executives in the 60s. The was. Um, and they were also... It was unknown if Frank Gorshin would be on board to play the Riddler again. Um, and with too many returning characters, well, because why, why a lot of characters, a lot of, ask him? a lot of actors had been replaced on the show mm. in addition to Catwoman. So with too many returning characters being portrayed by new actors and a gamble on a new female co-lead, with that, Fox passed on the idea and said only a short pilot was created to introduce Batgirl. I don't think it was ever uh, shown. Interesting. Um, so Viviana, favorite part of this movie? favorite scene character actor line what's what's your favorite part oh, i don't even know um I'm so much to, to choose from. i'm trying to go through yeah um i don't know why don't you go first um i think i'm gonna say like the sub the romantic subplot because what you know because here's why because it's really over the top and goofy Mm -hmm. We get to see Adam West be Bruce Wayne. I think he's a really fantastic Bruce Wayne. And then that little moment at the end when he realizes that he had been duped this it's whole like time. It's like a single tear. It's like a single tear and it's both like hilarious but also like kind of sad and like touching. Um, mm. There's definitely like I'm sure there's other parts that I maybe like more but that's just like what's jumping out to me mm -hmm. um, about this. Like it kind of captures I think what I like about this movie that is able again to thread that needle between like actually... Like, it being a serious, but also not serious at the exact same time. Yeah. Um. So, what about you? I, I went first. You stalled enough. What? What? Did you <laughs> I think kind of on uh, a similar note. I would say, um, just the characters, like just the acting. I feel like they they do it in like a silly way, but like an entertaining silly way and not like a oh this is stupid type of like not like annoying orange you know like <laughs> okay yeah like like I don't know it was just something it just seemed very charming like all of their like that's the word charming is the word I would yeah say. all of their performances just seemed like to fit mm -hmm. I don't know and they like all went well together um yeah mm -hmm. I would say yeah. All right, good. Yeah. I think because they're all silly. Okay. One out of ten. What are you giving this movie? One out of ten. I don't know. Let me see. So on Letterbox, I did a four out of five. So. So an eight out of ten. Sure. Eight out of ten. We're gonna have to buy it on Blu-ray. <laughs> um. So what? Why? Why do you give it that score? So it's obviously your favorite of the three you've watched. Um. As for me as well. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's easily the best of the three that we've watched. Um, I think even though we did kind of come to the conclusion that there isn't much to it, I, I think that the story with this one is a little bit tighter than, like, say, the first one or whatever. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, this, this is better than the other two by leaps and No, leaps. yeah. Was, no so, comparison. No, yeah. So that, and then, you know, it has, like, the classic villains and, um... I don't know. I guess just. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna sound kind of silly because this is the movie that made those. But like, kind of the classic things you would think about with Batman, mm -hmm. right? Um, so 
Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just... I don't know. I, I just thought it portrayed it a lot better than, like, the other ones. Or, like, more familiar, I would I would say. This feels more faithful to the comics than the, than the yeah. previous two did. Yeah. Um, which makes sense considering, <clears throat> when, at least when the first serial came out, mm-hmm. Batman as a comic character had only existed for, like, a few years. That's right, yeah. Where, whereas at this that. point, a whole generation had grown up on Batman comics. Yeah. By the time you get to the 60s. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm also going to put this at the top of my ranking. I think I'm going to give it a 7, though. I think mm-hmm. it's just... It's, I, I want it to be sometimes even more goofy at times. What? Like, even like, more goofy than the shark? Um, oh, my God. So, so I... Um, but I really, really dug it. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm glad you gave it such a high score. We'll get it. We'll it, own it on home media. I know. don't know. I just had a, I just had fun watching it. I was never bored, and and it yeah. was just like so silly. Mm-hmm. And you know, it wasn't it wasn't just like oh, this is you know a nice movie or whatever. It's like I was just laughing, and then you know stuff would happen. I kind of calmed down, and then something then else would happen, silly yeah. would happen. And I'm like, what is going on? What is the silliness? <laughs> All right. Well, I, I think it's time to wrap this up. What yes. do you think? Do you think it's time to wrap this up? Let's go. Let's go. That's it for this week's episode. <laughs> of... Please now stop. that's what I call a franchise. Stop. <laughs> next we'll be watch next week we'll be watching the next film in the franchise, the 1989 film, also titled Batman. Sure. Viviana. Where can they find us? Very strange. You guys can find us wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Franchise Podcast. We know you have many podcasting options, and we thank you for choosing us. Peace out, guys. Goodbye.